Hi everyone, welcome to Five Quote Shakespeare Hamlet Theme Analysis. In this series, we'll look at a total of 15 different themes, and in this video, we'll look at self versus society duty. What I do in each video is I first unpack some of the important elements of the theme and apply it to the play, and then we dig deeply into the text of each play for evidence of the connection. If you find these videos useful, please like and subscribe, and if you make a donation, you get a complete set of the PDFs I use in the series. See the description for details. The problem of self versus society is a big problem for everyone in this play. You can use the timestamps to skip forward if you need to. All characters are trapped between their sense of duty to themselves and their sense of duty to society. Conflicted loyalties are a common theme in a lot of literature. You're probably familiar with it. It's the central conflict, for example, in The Hunger Games. Because societies do two things. One, they nurture us and they provide stability for us. Without societies, we wouldn't be much of anything. We'd be, we'd be animals living on a mountaintop somewhere all alone. But, of course, society can also smother us if they don't allow enough freedom for the individuality of each of us to, to thrive. So individuals must make sacrifices for the greater good, absolutely. We can't do anything we want to do. We can't drive on whatever side of the road we want to drive on, otherwise there'd be total chaos, of course. But how much do we owe to the self and how much do we owe to others or society? That's a question that a lot of literature asks, of course. There's a line between selfishness and victimhood. If I give too, if I, if I take too much from others, am I being selfish? If I develop my own self too much, am I being selfish? But if I give too much of, my, of myself, am I, am I victimizing myself? Uh, if I'm, am I cheating myself, do you see? Rarely is the answer obvious or easy, of course, and in this particular play, we're going to look at uh, um, the, the parental figures as a representative of that society, although you might encounter stories where the country, your job, or your school represents the, the either nurturing power of society or the destructive smothering power of society. So in this play, we'll look at parental figures which represent society, tradition, culture, and, and of course, conformity, and that can be both a good and a bad thing. If you're talking about driving on one side of the road or, or the other, conformity is a very, very good thing, do you see? We owe a lot to our parents, but unless they willingly step aside, the youth fails to mature and individuate, and that's the problem we see here in Hamlet. Um, I'll talk briefly about this from, from uh, 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 the Harry Potter perspective, because in Harry Potter, um, the culture is represented, the past is represented by Dumbledore, by the father figures in these stories. And here we see in one of these books a uh, beautiful, beautiful scene of, of the culture stepping aside, do you see? Society as represented in Dumbledore stepping aside. And Harry Potter has to kill society kill his father do you see the father figure in order for Harry Potter to become the new Dumbledore for Harry Potter to become himself so here we see youth killing the father the past society and culture and here we see beautifully the father willingly killed so that youth can flourish and society and the society can renew itself do you see that's what a healthy society does yes it nurtures you nurtures you nurtures you until you're ready to take over do you see, as the society itself, which in turn will nurture the next generation. That's how it works. Now, we've also got the dark side of society as well, represented here by Voldemort. And here we see Ophelia saying, basically talking to society, Voldemort, her own father, do you see, saying, I shall obey my lord. I shall obey my lord, is what she says. Harry, too, he says to his mother, I shall, o I shall in all my best obey you, Madam D.C. So there, these are the youths that are, that are not able to, to uh, overcome the oppressiveness of society and become themselves. And that's what we're going to talk about today, that tension between the needs of the self and the needs of society. I explore this more in my uh, Hero's uh, uh, Journey uh, discussion in, in, in one of my first videos. So you can go have a look at that. There is no struggle between the self and society with this guy. He is a dark triad type. He is a Machiavellian, a narcissist, and a psychopath. And his his loyalties lie, reside strictly with the self, DC. For dark triad types, duty lies unquestioningly with the self. Uh, just go to Wikipedia, you'll find these things. He's a narcissist, gr uh, feelings of grandiosity, pride, egoism, lack of empathy, absolutely. Machiavellianism. Manipulation and exploitation of everybody in this play. Go back and watch my other video. I've got a video on that. An absence of morality, a lack of emotion, and a high 
level of self-interest. That's him, right to a T. And a psychopath as well. Uh, uh, antisocial behavior, impulsivity, impulsivity, not so much. Selfishness for sure, callousness for sure, unemotional traits for sure, and remorselessness for sure, do you see? So he is all of these things, and there's lots of evidence of it in the play. Uh, here we see him when he hears that Ophelia has died. What's his first response when he hears that this lovely, poor, trapped figure has died? What's his response? Ugh, he sighs. How much I had to do to calm Laertes's rage. Ugh. Now fear I this will give it start again. He just spent the last, you know, several pages of the text trying to manipulate, calm down, manipulate Laertes' emotions to make him a tool for his uh, 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 murdering of Hamlet. Do you see? He spent all of this energy, and then, she, then, then Ophelia goes off and kills herself and ruins it for me. It's all about him, DC. This, this, this is a damning, damning quote. And in this play, in, the, in, the, in, this, in, in this version, the 2009 uh, version, uh, Gertrude responds to this, actually. And it's, it's almost as if that she gets, for the first time, she gets a window into what he's really like, which, which, which actually uh, uh, proves or suggests that she commits suicide at the end of this when she drinks the poison. And that's how the 2009 version depicts it, DC. She responds and she looks at him with shock and says, that's what you're thinking of? You're not thinking of poor Ophelia? You're thinking of that, really? Zero empathy for Ophelia. Zero empathy for his own wife, whom he claims to love. Uh, he's trying to convince Claudia, uh, tries to trying to convince Laertes here to kill Hamlet, his dear wife's dear son. And he says to Laertes, the queen, his mother, lives by his looks. She loves him so much, but meh, she'll just think that this is an accident. Do you see if when? Uh, Hamlet dies. No concern whatsoever, of course, for Hamlet, and no concern for his dear wife as well. So Dark Triad self is number one. Okay, let's look at Laertes. And that was five quote Shakespeare Hamlet theme analysis, self versus society duty. I hope you found it useful. And if you did, please like and subscribe and pick up a copy of your PDFs if you need them. Thanks for watching.